Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's dive in. Uh, first, let me remind you that I've got my object loaded. I'm in the shading tab. I have viewport shading enabled and I have a principled shader already applied to my object. I'll make a couple of changes to that before I add anything else. First, the metallic is going to go all the way up to one and the specular down to zero. The roughness we're going to change to 0.15. The anisotropic we're going to set to 0.2 with a rotation of 0.25. Sheen is going to be set to 0.5 and everything else is going to stay the same. So we've already got things happening with the material here but we need to add a whole bunch of stuff in between. I'm going to start by adding a texture coordinate. So shift A and search for texture coordinate. Plop that in. Then add a mapping node. And we're going to plug the object from there into the vector of the mapping node. Now I've done those first, normally they get tagged on something else. I've done those first because everything's going to stem from them. So first up we're going to add a Musgrave texture. Then a Noise texture. Followed by a Color Ramp. And we're going to take the color from the Color Ramp. Plug that in the base color of the principled shader. We're going to take the color from the noise factor into the factor of the color ramp. And we're going to take the height from the Musgrave texture into the vector of the noise texture. You can see there's nice little oil slick style effect going on here. Now the vector from the mapping node goes into the vector of the Musgrave texture. couple of changes to make here. In the Musgrave texture, change the detail to 20, dimension to 1, and the lacanarity to 1. In the noise texture, change the scale to 1, detail to 20, roughness to 0.25, and distortion to 1. On the color ramp, use this little down arrow to flip it so you've got the black at the other end. Okay. Next up, we're going to add a bump node and plug the normal from that into the normal of the principal shader. The color from the color ramp is going to go into the strength and the distance we're going to set at 0.1. Next, I'm going to add a Voronoi texture. Plot that in the middle. Take the ve vector from the mapping node into the vector of the Voronoi texture. <clears throat> and then we're going to add a mix RGB shader in here. We're going to take the distance from the Voronoi texture into the factor of that mix shader. And change the blend mode to color. Take the color from there into the height of the bump node. 
Now we've got a mixed shader, so we need some other things to mix it with. So first a noise texture, followed by a musgrave texture, followed by a boronoi texture. And to cap those three off, we will need a color ramp. We're going to bring the white from this over to about 0.65 and the black to 0.5. We're going to plug this into color one of the mix shader. We'll take the distance from the Voronoi into the factor of the color ramp the height from the Musgrave into the vector of the Boronoi and the factor from the noise texture into the vector of the Musgrave. You can already see things happening here. Now don't forget everything's coming from this mapping node so we need to plug that in as well. So the vector of the mapping node goes into the vector of the noise texture. Lots and lots going on here now. Okay, we're going to select those four, Shift D to duplicate and bring them down. And then again, we're taking the vector from the mapping node into the vector of the noise. And the color from this color ramp will go into socket two of the color mixer. Now let's take a look at the settings on these. So detail on the first noise texture up to 20, roughness to 0.525, distortion to 3. Scale on the Musgrave down to 2, detail to 1, and the others stay the same. Scale on the Voronoi, we're going to crank up to 11 and leave the randomness at 1. For the bottom set, I'm going to change the detail to 20, roughness to pipe 525, and distortion to 3. For the Musgrave, scale to 2, detail to 1, everything else the same. And then for the Voronoi, 11 for the scale. Now we're going to bring this white in a bit further for this one. Just a quick change to the middle Voronoi texture. We're going to change this F1 mode to smooth F1. Scale to 10 and leave the other two the same. Now we can branch all these rather than having all these individual things by shift and right click and drag over those four lines and then it will basically just tie them all together. One last tweak up in here on the first color ramp that we put in. We're going to change that black to a light gray-ish color. So let's say 0.125. Yes, I think that will do. And we're not quite there, just one more, I say just one more, I'll probably just keep tweaking forever, but I'm changing that first noise texture to 1.8. 
And this lacanarity on the Musgrave texture to 1.2. These are all just little tweaks that we end up doing just to try and make things as we'd want them. So I think I'm just about there. Mm, scale, color. I think I might just tweak these a bit. So this black color I'm going to knock back to about 0.4 means I can bring this white over to about 0.5. Let's pop the Voronoi up to 12. And the same for the bottom one. So just a small change to this middle color ramp, this one here, because I basically wanted to bring out this detail a bit more. So this one has gone down to 0.4. I'll move this one to, let's say, 0.55 and see how that does. Actually, no. Let's try and move that away from it then and see how that goes. Change the black a bit, see if that makes a difference. It's knocking it back. Okay, I think that about does it for me. So there were just a couple of last um, still tinkering. Just a couple of last um, bits and pieces just to tinker with there, just to get that looking spot on in my eyes. Obviously you can tinker and find the way that looks good for you. Um, but let's send that to render. As a reminder, I am using the Cycles Render Engine and a graphics card with a thousand, yes, 1024 samples. Okay, and there we go, our reticulated metal effect. I love how we've got all that sort of tortured surface detail going on. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for future videos from me. In the meantime, thanks for watching.